Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I um, hope you guys enjoyed my very um, kind of unedited video last week of my method with rice water. I promise to follow it up probably next week with the science behind it. But thank you all for the comments and for um, joining me along this ride, for liking, subscribing, and don't forget to like, comment below. Um, all the products that I'm going to mention, I will link below if you guys are interested. But today, my little nerditos, <laughs> I am going to gently explain to you my disdain for topical hyaluronic acid in skincare. A lot of the publication houses do not necessarily publicize this information because they are in bed with a lot of marketing dollars that comes from the skincare industry. And within the skincare industry, hyaluronic acid has been leading the race to make a lot of money with all of its miraculous claims and the fact that it is in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of products. Um, honestly, I need to like tap into Hyaluronic Acid's publicist because it's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. And the more you start really understanding an ingredient list and reading about an ingredient list, etc., the more your mind is going to go Pah! because it is in literally everything. So buckle down. Get your pens, get your papers, get your fake glasses on, because we are going to debunk HA today. What's the buzz about? Honestly, if you're asking that question, are you living in a cave? And how do you have Wi-Fi? And how the hell did you land on me? Is my question to you. Because hyaluronic acid has been around for over... I don't know how many decades, but at least in the past decade, it's the ingredient that every single beauty editor, writer, uh, dermatologist, skinfluencer, the skinfluencer, skinfluencer, skincare expert, esthetician has been touting and talking about as if, you know, like they've figured out the fountain of youth. They haven't. They haven't figured out the fountain of youth. If they have, I would look like a baby fetus right now. But I am going to tell you, Throughout our time together, I'll give you little tips and tricks to look as good as baby fetus, but maybe not a baby fetus. Anyway, um, it's everywhere. It's been like touted to be the miracle ingredient of the years. It is supposedly one of the best moisturizers out there. Your lips will plump and practically explode if you apply it topically. These are my lips. I have Walida on my lips and I have not injected my lips, FYI. Um, literally, it is in every effing step of your skincare routine. So it is really difficult to run away from hyaluronic acid, but the beauty industry and the skincare industry is making you question yourself and gaslighting you if, they're, if you are asking yourself, do I really like this? Is this actually that beneficial for me? I don't really see these miraculous results that everybody is claiming. I was one of those people. It was probably eight years ago. I have very dry lips in general because I lick my lips and in winter with the heaters on, it is really hard for me to keep them moisturized and to, in order to hold on to their water. So I bought a hyaluronic acid lip serum. I think it was from Neutrogena at the time. Um, I put it on my lips and I swear, 10 minutes later, my lips were drier and flakier than when I put on the product. And I thought to myself, this is really odd. Because as I know, and as we've all learned in medical school, hyaluronic acid is a great humectant. It holds on to water. Why are my lips so dry? And so here I am, fast forward today, going to debunk the myth of hyaluronic acid. So let's start with the names. Basically, in vivo, in your body, it started off as hyaluronan, okay? Which they quickly renamed hyaluronic acid. Not to freak you guys out. It's not an exfoliating acid. It's not an acid that's going to peel your skin. Its pH is acidic, and so hyaluronic acid is known as an acid. In the synthesized form, it is often hydrolyzed and broken down. In some, so you will see hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid in ingredient lists as well, in addition to sodium hyaluronate, which is the salt form of hyaluronic acid. 
It has nothing to do with the size of hyaluronic acid, which is, it has to do with the fact that sodium hyaluronate is the cheaper salt version of hyaluronic acid. So when a company is trying to produce something that has hyaluronic acid claims, they'll put sodium hyaluronate in it because they'll save themselves some pennies in the process, not really worrying about the quality that they are delivering to you. But just to give you guys an example, I'm going to, I pulled up a bunch of stuff on my desk and I'm going to read to you. CeraVe, hydrating cream to foam cleanser, sodium hyaluronate right here. Boom. It's in a cleanser. This is one that I have not opened by Garnier. It is the Brightening Serum Cream. Sodium Hyaluronate, boom, it's in here. Next, Elta Sunscreen, it has it. Sodium Hyaluronate, of course it does, because why not? Here is one, the Menopause Cooling Mist by Indeed Labs. There she is, there's my little Sodium Hyaluronate right here. So the list goes on, and this one is by L'Oreal, which is 1.5% pure hyaluronic acid. And I will tell you, I was on their board when they were approving products to get out into the world for all of you guys. This was one of the products they wanted the dermatology board to approve. And yours truly was the one who objected because of the claims initially on the packaging. And so if you go and you read their package claims, they will now I specify the percentage of low molecular weight to high molecular weight HA in this particular product so that you guys are more educated. So... That one is one. My point is, it's in everything. It's truly, truly in everything. So you do have to be an educated consumer when trying to figure out if it is for you or not. What exactly is hyaluronic acid? Hyaluronic acid is also known as a gag. Not because it makes me gag, but because it is a gag. It is a glycosaminoglycans, which is terrible mom joke. Terrible nerd joke, but I'm still going with it. Um, it is a sugary carb. It is the sugar donut of the pastry section. It is a carby carb with a lot of sugar on top. And does it really offer much benefit to you as a human being? Does a donut offer much benefit to you as a human being? Probably instant gratification, but it's not going to help you in the long run. Same goes with HAs. If I had to think of a astrological sign for this one, and the greediest sign of the zodiac, according to my in-depth research, is the Capricorn sign. So all you Capricorns out there, this is not my view, all right? Don't take it up with me. Take it up with Astrology Zone, Pink Villa, uh, Astro Talk, and Revive Zone, okay? I looked it up, and according to all of these sites, the greediest sign of the Zodiac is the Capricorn. So HA, you greedy little bee, you are a Capricorn. Not only do you attract water, okay? Because you appear all luminescent, you then hold on to it and you never want to let it go. For better or for worse, until that ship drowns, you are drowning with your water intact. And that is what you do. You control the water concentration of the skin in the long run. And you want to be loved for it. And you hired a publicist who took you, you know, to the stratospheres um, in the process. Native HA, which is basically the hyaluronic acid that we are born with, we all have it in our skin. If you think of the skin, it's a layer cake. There are two main layers, okay? I'm simplifying this. There's the epidermis, which is the top part, and then there's the dermis, which is the cushiony part. Most of the hyaluronic acid is located within the dermis to give you structural support and to give your skin bounce and plumpness and lushiness and chewiness, like a donut, okay? That's where most of the HA lies. Native HA, so basically the HA in humans, has been shown to be able to hold up to a thousand times its weight in water. And by holding up to a thousand times its weight in water, it manages to expand and plump and look super juicy. All right? Juicy. All right. Um, where do we get the water from? We get the water from our diet, through our blood, because it's deeper down. And that's why it's super important to hydrate throughout the day to make sure that you're drinking enough water for that your skin to stay nice and plump. Like I said, it has a structural role in the extracellular matrix, so it gives your overall skin that bounce. But it's super interesting because it also has a really important role when it comes to wound healing, inducing inflammation, allowing a cut or a wound to heal within, and by promoting what is known as angiogenesis, so increasing the blood supply and the superficial tiny blood vessels to a wound to give the blood to the wound so that the blood can heal and regenerate. So that is the main role or roles of hyaluronic acid.
in vivo in our bodies. However, this is where size matters. All right? All of you insecure people out there, I'm not talking about you. But size matters when it comes to hyaluronic acid. And this is the dirtiest, biggest, not so little secret of the skincare industry. Because ultimately, it's the size that's going to dictate the function of the hyaluronic acid that you're using. Okay? And most brands nowadays are going to fluff and puff and tout the fact that their HA is super low molecular weight so that it can go super deep into your skin so it can get down in there to plump you up like a puffer fish. The truth of the matter is, in its native state, HA is high molecular weight. In the same way that hopefully by now you guys know this, you can't take collagen and go... I'm putting the collagen on my face. I'm going to restore the collagen supply of my skin. That doesn't work. Same goes with hyaluronic acid. You can't just take, this is an injectable hyaluronic acid, and think your face is going to puff like a puffer fish. It doesn't work like that. And so, because high molecular weight HA, which is the type of HA found in our skin, can't get absorbed through our skin, scientists and chemists have come up with ways to break it up hydrolyze it, chop it up into tiny little fragments, decreasing its weight overall, called low molecular weight HA. But the truth is, it literally does not pass your epidermis. It stays within your epidermis. It actually doesn't even go close to your dermis where the native HA is. And so, so the false claim number one is that it's going super, super deep. Despite the size that is being used, hyaluronic acid sits at the top layer of your skin. It usually lies within your epidermis. False claim number two. It's super duper hydrating. No, it's not. Let's actually take out Wolverton. Shall we? Shall we, skincare industry? I'm not going to drop it today because I don't need to freak you guys out. Let me read this. Under low humidity conditions, humectants, such as hyaluronic acid, draw moisture from the skin and increase Transepidermal water loss. If something is hydrating, it should decrease transepidermal water loss. It should allow for water to remain within the epidermis and not be lost. So then they follow up the statement by saying, for this reason, the humectant must be used in combination with an occlusive ingredient so that it doesn't evaporate. So that comes back to my thinking, how can you claim then that an ingredient alone is hydrating? It's absolutely not hydrating. In vivo, native HA, which is high molecular weight HA, does hold up to a thousand times its weight in water. However, no synthesized HA has ever been proven to be able to hold its own weight a thousand times over in water. And that is fact. And so this false um, repetition of information needs to stop because it's absolutely incorrect. And one big brand actually was faced with a class action lawsuit. It's public knowledge. Peter Thomas Roth was faced with a class action lawsuit because of this particular reason. So I am always dumbfounded when I see skincare brands repeating these falsities. So where does then the hyaluronic acid get its water? Why don't we ask ourselves that question? Native HA, the high molecular weight HA gets it from the diet and your blood source. Because it's within the dermis, it feeds off of the blood supply to plump constantly in order to remain nice and plump and cushiony and pushiny and poof, okay? Topical HA gets water from the closest source it attaches to, i.e. your skin. Because it can't go that deep either, it's literally drawing up the water from your keratinocytes. It's slowly attracting it and slowly emptying your cells of all of its water content in order to puff and huff and poof and appear nice and puffy and so that your lines don't appear anymore on your face. But in the process, as the water slowly evaporates from the hyaluronic acid, over time, you become dehydrated and shriveled. Like my lips felt that day when I used the hyaluronic acid on them. I put that HA on my lips. I felt so plump for the first 
30 seconds. And then eight minutes later, I was like a shriveled prune, like, where'd my lips go? Where'd my lips go? They were gone because the H A little S H I T ate them. And so that happens with hyaluronic acid. Over time, you get dehydrated, and over time, it's going to cause more water loss to your skin. Well, what if we seal it in with a moisturizer? Then my answer is, isn't that kind of just counterproductive? Why use it in the first place? If it's going to evaporate and you are going to have transepidermal water loss because it's sitting so superficially within your epidermis, why even use it at all and just use a moisturizer and be done? Because it's eating up the moisture of your moisturizer, so then what's your moisturizer doing for your skin in the process? Just saying, okay? Um, and then the third false claim that I often always hear is that it's so soothing and calming. Water. And I always think of Zoolander. Water is the essence of life. Water. And no. No, 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 no. Hyaluronic acid is not soothing, especially not the one used in skincare products, especially not low molecular weight. High molecular weight, HA, has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects, and that calms shit down. But that also doesn't go very deep at all. It literally just sits on the surface of your skin. If I were to open this up, and this is high molecular weight HA, I will show you guys, because I'm wasting a syringe of HA just for you guys. Okay, this is hyaluronic acid is high molecular weight HA. This is a gel that does not get absorbed. It's literally sitting on my skin. Molecular weight HA is anti-inflammatory. Low molecular weight HA, actually the broken up kind, is pro-inflammatory. So when you have a cut or a wound or anything and your skin is broken down, the hyaluronic acid gets broken down as well within the dermis and that initiates the toll-like receptors, which then sets off a whole cascade of signals to induce inflammation so that that wound can heal. And that's how low molecular weight HA helps in wound healing. Plus, it also supports the growth of superficial blood vessels to feed that wound so that it heals better. So saying that a low molecular weight HA is calming is an oxymoron. It's not calming, it's not soothing, it's definitely inflammatory inducing. And so what I have seen with my patients over time who use a bunch of HA in various steps of their skincare routine is increased dryness, increased redness, as well as inflammation and sometimes even irritation of their skin. And this is why I felt the need to do this video because there are so much false marketing associated with hyaluronic acid that I actually think it can be detrimental to people in the long run if they overuse it in every step of their skincare routine. And that leads me to my final point, point how do we use HA? I don't think HA is the devil. Despite all of this, I think if you have an event, a wedding, a red carpet, if you're that, you know, who knows? If you have anything, va va voom, you need to get ready for a date, you name it, a super Zoom event, um, use it before that event. It will plump your face and give you a nice, you know, overall plumped appearance. But make sure you seal it in with something that is a strong, you know, occlusive, a really good moisturizer or even like a moisturizer with an oil. If you are insistent that you cannot get rid of your HA, I am not going to fight you, but do me one favor and just try limiting one product within your skincare routine that has hyaluronic acid. Don't use it in every single product. Don't overuse it either, because as you start to overuse it, your skin will get dehydrated in the process. So for instance, I know that the L'Oreal Glycolic Acid Serum has a little bit of sodium hyaluronate in it. That's the only product I'll use at night that has it. During the day, I actually don't use any products that have sodium hyaluronate in it or hyaluronic acid. I try to limit how much I'm using it throughout my skincare routine. And so I think if you guys have that in mind, then you will be overall much more better educated. And if you guys have been breaking out or feeling really red or inflamed or dry despite using hyaluronic acid, hopefully this video opens up your eyes and explains to you the science behind why it's not necessarily the best. And lastly, I do prefer glycerin. Tried and true, definitely in a better humectant, smaller in size, has the ability to go deeper, and has not been proven to be inflammatory whatsoever. Just saying.
we'll save that topic for another day. I hope you guys like this video. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up or two. Subscribe, leave your comments below. I do always try to read them, although I'm not always great at answering because my thumbs need to take a little bit of a break every once in a while. And um, hyaluronic acid, I'm sorry, but I'm not because you've had your time in the sun. And now it's time for someone else. So I will catch you guys next Saturday. Um, hope you have a beautiful week.